Hi, my name is Leon Rowe, currency trader and trading coach at trading180.com and welcome to this week's supply and demand for us and gold fundamental and technical analysis for the week ahead starting the 5th of February. Hope you had a great trading week and um, if you do like the videos that I provide every week, uh, please don't forget to like, subscribe and share the videos with your fellow uh, trading colleagues as it's a free way to support the uh, the channel and get the quality content out to those who may need it. So um, getting into the week ahead, 5th of February, in the upcoming week, investors will closely watch for insights from the Federal Reserve officials along with key economic indicators such as the ISM service PMIs and trade balance data. Internationally, the focus will be on interest rate decisions. In Australia, that's going to be a very important uh, one. Um, although they are expected to, to hold rates, it's really about whether um, the RBA, the Reserve Bank of Australia, are going to be more hawkish or dovish, depending on um, uh, their um, uh, what they see in the data in terms of uh, inflation and and uh, GDP. So, additionally, external trade data for Australia, Germany, and Canada are going to be watched. And in China, investors will scrutinise the services PMI and consumer and producer prices. Uh, China hasn't been doing too well, but that may um, give China a bit of a boost. And if that is the case, then obviously that will affect uh, commodity currencies, or it should affect, I have a decent effect on commodity currencies. And finally, Germany will release factory orders and industrial production, Canada labor market data and Euro area retail sales. And so um, lots going on uh, in the week. And uh, before we get into the uh, some more technicals and fundamentals, I thought I would go over um, my trade of the week, which was the Swiss yen. And looking at the Swiss yen, if we go to the the uh the fundamental uh the trading 180 sorry um uh discord group and in fact let me just make this a bit uh zoomed in a bit too much on this one second yeah so so uh if you go to the to the group and, and the swiss yen um this was a setup it was a stop hunt that um i posted to the group and i said if anyone's looking to buy the yen over the swiss uh this is a very nice stop hunt uh setup if it occurs and so um, if you look at the uh, the stop hunt uh, setup that I had uh, posted, and this was on the 26th of January, so it was at the beginning of the week, uh, we had seen uh, this setup, and this is what I was uh, expecting to happen in terms of you know if prices do you know pop up uh, pop up above that level and give um, uh, some sort of stop hunt indication, and then a pull back down into uh, the lows of this area. Matter of fact. Uh, that's what I was kind of planning out, and that was what was uh, you know um, uh, I was looking for in the group. So um, we ended up a uh, few people actually ended up getting involved in the trade. So later on, uh, that was on the uh, 29th. A few days later, I said, if anyone uh, is looking for this trade, obviously a nice setup if it occurs. And I said, did anyone else get, else get in this trade? And there was a few people. Uh, few traders that also saw the same thing and uh, managed to get involved in this trade and um, this is the uh, the image so you had again the stop hunt here uh, that, that occurred right there so that was the level level stop hunt above and they were expecting prices to kind of come down which it ended up doing so um, this was the actual uh, trade setup and the uh, the chart so um, that was the level the stop hunt here and so the entry was at the, this candlestick right here and my stop was about 15 pips above the high somewhere around there let's just see where 15 yeah somewhere around here 15 pips and so um that was the risk now um they ended up going around uh, three to one uh if you know to, towards the bottom of the range in the, the bottom of the auction um, but with this trade, the way I manage this trade is really um, I'm taking uh, one to one uh, around here to get myself to really like a break even position. And then once I'm in a break even position, um, then um, and when I say one to one, I'm taking half position off at one to one. So I'm taking, if I you know, risk a pound, I'm taking, you know, 50 pence off and leaving 50 pence in the market. And then my plan really is to actually swing trade this. So if we zoom out a little bit more. 
you know, something like on a, on a daily time frame chart, I'm looking at actually swing trading it down to some of these lows, right? Um, uh, reason being, fundamentally, and why I'm getting short, why I got short on this was because uh, the yen, which we'll talk about in, in, in later on in the video, is uh, really the only bank, central bank, uh, out of the G10 that are expected to uh, look to high rates uh, this year, whereas the Swiss franc are looking to cut rates. So there's an interest rate divergence play going on there. I think the Swiss franc should weaken uh, over the next uh, quarter or so. And so this play now becomes um, uh, decent when it comes to certain targets on a higher time frame. So um, so this is what I'm looking for. And I think many of the other guys might, might be looking for this. We've pulled back, obviously, uh, not ideal of course we always want our trades to just drop like a stone um or, or you know rise in our in our favor but ultimately i do think that uh this should eventually roll over if it doesn't roll over worst thing that can happen is that i am i will be at break even because of the fact that i've taken um some profit so let's just say prices do come up and manage to stop me out right here well because i've taken half profit already um, if prices do come up here, then I haven't lost anything other than, you know, overnight swaps, for example. But I will still look for short trades because I know, like I said, fundamentally, I want to be a buyer of the uh, the yen over the Swiss franc. So it might offer me another opportunity to get involved in this at maybe a better price. And hopefully then it starts to roll over. So let's walk, I'll keep an eye on this trade. Obviously, um, I've entered into some other trades as well, like the uh Euro Swiss and um, Aussie Swiss, and uh, let's see what happens with those as well. But that's been the trade uh, of uh, of the week, a profitable trade, um, you know, depending on how you managed it or a break even at the bare minimum. So yeah, that's really the trade. So um, if you do, go, if you guys are watching this and want to get involved in the uh, mentoring, uh, I open up my mentoring probably. Uh, uh, maybe once a quarter, meaning uh, maybe about four times a year, four or five times a year. And uh, one of the areas that you can get access to is my trading videos. And um, this is a members only area where I have members only analysis and videos that are in here that you don't see on uh, YouTube. So if you do want to join, um, the next intake will be probably maybe around the end of March, beginning of April. And by the way, to all the guys that are in the Discord group, um, this is uh, the members uh, uh, video as well. So go to the trading videos channel and uh, the latest uh, uh, fundamental and technical analysis um, uh, video is in there and it's not the same as what I provide on YouTube. It's more in depth and uh, I go over all the pairs that I'm interested in. Anyways, um, so that was the trade of the week. So uh, getting into um, the dollar index now. So the dollar index, um, the, the, the massive news this week was that the uh, the the jobs really uh, and non-farm payrolls on friday the headline is blockbuster jobs report turns slowdown narrative on its head so employment jumped 553,000 in january exceeding all estimates and strong hiring is likely to delay federal reserve rate cuts and so um in order for there to be uh, rate cuts you need to really see um a downturn in the economy as well as inflation going back to the uh, the, the Federal Reserve's 2% target. And jobs and employment are an indication of how well the economy is doing. And so if the economy, um, if there are, you know, is higher employment and low unemployment, then um, it doesn't give, you know, the, the the narrative. It's not playing into the narrative that the U.S. economy is contracting and going into a recession anytime soon. Therefore, there will be a delay or there's likely to be a delay to Federal Reserve rate cuts. Now, I believe that rate cuts are coming this year um, as we are in an election cycle. But, um, you know, the the I don't think they're going to come in March and I've been saying this for 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 a while. So, um, so when we look at really the uh, the charts, you can see 
the, the, that the market is repricing the dollar higher because it's pricing out rate cuts. And so this is an equally weighted uh, dollar index, by the way. Um, and if you do want to, uh, you know, understand how to get this uh, calculation on TradingView, I have a video on my uh, YouTube channel. If you go to the uh, the um, the Trading One Eighty page, you should be able to find it. it's like the, maybe the second or third video, most recent video that I've done uh, regarding, um, and it has a thing in the title, uh, 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 currency index, something like that. Anyway, it's like the, the maybe the second or third video that I've done. A recent video anyways um so we did have you know prices pretty much move to the upside um i was expecting prices to potentially want to come down to this demand zone it didn't do that that's fine no um i did manage to get into some um, a dollar trade on the dollar swiss so uh, that's okay as well but i will expect the dollar to some degree either you know push higher or it's gonna you know maybe pull back a bit to push higher i think the dollar is going to be supported at this level here can't really see it uh, going below that unless obviously we have some data that um, that really comes out and really kind of supports the fact that the Fed may start to uh, cut sooner rather than later so um, who knows but for now that those job date that job data um, is basically making uh, the market reprice uh, rate cuts meaning that the um, the dollar is looking to strengthen at some point. So for me, the dollar is a uh, continued buy. Uh, many of you uh, been, who've been following me on the on, you know, week to week have been saying that my bias is to the upside and you can see you know, what's been happening. So let's see what happens. But if you are short on the, uh, on the dollar, then um, we are up into this supply zone and you also have another uh, supply zone probably around there. Um, to look for uh, short trades, but uh, personally, I would probably look for this area. Uh, you know, the uh, the demand zones is really what I'm looking for in terms of uh, um, buying the, uh, the the dollar. So, um, moving on to the dollar yen and the dollar yen. Um, again, more of a trickier pair to trade because um, you do have, in fact the uh the market expects as i was saying before the japanese bond yields uh, and bank shares jump on bank of japan rate hike bets so um the bank of japan are really the only bank that are looking to hike rates this year in terms of the g10 banks and it says it's clear the bank of japan hawkishness has increased says muf j asx kato and the jgb 10-year yield climbs to its highest in more than a month. And so um, when you have, uh, I guess, a delay in rate uh, cuts by the dollar, um, but also the, the fact that the, uh, the yen um, are looking to potentially hike rates, that needs to be obviously um, uh, supported by the actual data. Uh, you can have scenarios where either you're looking for short trades at supply zones, right? Or you can actually still look for uh, buy trades if prices do pull back into this demand zone before looking at going uh, long. So um, that's really um, the, the the play for the uh, for the dollar yen. Not necessarily again a pair that I'm I've got on my watch list uh, for sure, but not a pair that I'm immediately looking to trade until I think the uh, the US dollar really do start to um, cut rates and they enter into their rate cutting cycle. Whereas this is an election year and so it's probably inevitable that the uh, the federal reserve will look to um uh, cut rates uh, at some point so moving on to the uh the dollar cad and the dollar cad um we have uh, prices uh, being and being supported really by recent uh, dollar news the canadian dollar though did have some decent news uh, of its own i think the uh, GDP month for month, I think it came out as better than expected. So um, uh, again, it's a, it's a bit more of a difficult pair to trade in the short term because you do have some positive sentiment for the Canadian dollar. And I think uh, there's been some pushback on uh, the timing of uh, their rate cuts. So uh, whereas maybe about three weeks ago, it was probably somewhere around maybe the March, April. Now I've seen reports saying it could be, you know, May, June. So 
let's see what happens. But um, in the short term, if I'm looking to trade this, I would still look for probably more buy trades on the US dollar and um, look for some more upside potential. But these are really the zones you're looking at. Either you're looking at um, prices to come back up to the 135s or the 136 round number before looking at going short if you're looking to buy the Canadian dollar um, or pull back into 134s, 13390s into that demand zone if looking for um, some buys on the US dollar. Looking at the British pound US dollar and again you've got really kind of two currencies that are um, that are quite strong and look, looking to appreciate uh, that's what the reason why you've seen uh, prices kind of enter into this auction this range is what traders would describe it as because you've got two uh, currencies that are appreciating and um, the market has accepted um, it, it to be a bit a bit more of a stable um, uh, exchange rate right when you have uh, two, uh, one currency is expected to appreciate against the other, then you have a trending market, right? So fundamentally, uh, this is what you've been seeing over the past, what, since, uh, yeah, since December, really. Uh, yeah, Dece mid-December prices have remained within this 128.50 uh, to 126 uh, level. Now, uh, there was some news this week where the Bank of England opens up prospects of rate cuts in 2024 if inflation eases. So key, cent key interest rate left unchanged at 5.25 in split vote and central bank drops guidance uh, that borrowing costs may rise. So um, pretty much all central banks are dropping the same guidance. But the, um, the Bank of England were pretty much just warning that if inflation eases, then of course, then they're going to have to start putting rate cuts on the table. Now, I think initially the market might have interpreted that as being ooh, a bit, uh, a bit, sorry, one second, where am I? Uh, a bit dovish, right, here we are, a bit dovish, um, but on the day then we kind of had a bit of a reversal, but then we had obviously the uh, the uh, the news come out for non-farm payrolls and that kind of pushed prices to the downside in terms of strengthening the US dollar. So I think your options still are, you know, technically looking for buy trades on the pound, a move back down below this uh, one to six area, or looking at the uh, or looking at the uh, um, uh, the moves up to the one two eights, one two eight fifties, before looking at getting uh, short on this currency pair. So now looking at the pound yen, and the pound yen um, again. Uh, we, last week we did have price come down into this. Uh, demand zone and bounced off it so that was quite nice technically um but i think going into the next uh, few months as long as the data supports the narrative of the uh the bank of japan looking to high crates i probably see upside of this pair as being quite limited and it's probably more downside like i said over the medium to long term so let's see what happens uh, with this currency pair if you do want to be a buyer in the short term, I think any pullbacks into that demand zone is decent, but my bet would more likely be on the yen strengthening overall in terms of um, in terms of uh, interest rate divergences. So uh, that's where my money would be. I'm not necessarily looking to trade this currency pair though. It'd be more like the euro yen, and I guess we'll get into that a bit later. But those are really your options for the pound yen. I do expect prices to kind of stay within. Uh, this overall auction though uh, or there or thereabouts somewhere like that before looking um, at again potentially rolling over over the medium term as we get closer to uh, the Bank of Japan's decision as to whether they will uh, adjust monetary policy. Looking at the euro uh, dollar so the euro dollar this week we had um, the euro actually had some decent news so the euro did have um, uh, unexpectedly avoided um, the downturn so they avoided the recession but struggles persist so um, yeah the uh, the eurozone unexpectedly avoided the first recession since the pandemic in the latter half of 2023 as firmer growth in Italy and Spain offset the malaise in Germany so it's more of about gross domestic products stagnating um, over the last uh, three months of the of the year and so what that did was um, 
uh, it, the, I think the um, it came in at zero the GDP, and so it kind of was boosted. Um, the euro was boosted in the short term, um, and also as well, inflation uh, came out as well. But it when it uh, it came down, slowed less than expected, and it clouds ECB cuts. So eurozone inflation eased less than anticipated at the start of the year, testing investors' expectations that the European Central Bank will begin lowering interest rates as soon as the spring and so um the central bank really need the you know core inflation to kind of come down and the other inflation measures to come down sooner before they start to look to cut sooner but if that doesn't if it doesn't come down or slow as fast as they expect then they're going to push you know out their expectation for when that rate cut is going to happen further into the future so um Although that initially supported the euro, um, you know, up until Thursday, um, I think against the dollar, um, I think expectations now uh, have to be readjusted in terms of the dollar um, and when they're going to cut in the, East, in the uh, Federal Reserve. And so I think there's potentially more downsides to come. I don't think the downside is going to be a massive downside, maybe maybe 100 pips from here, maybe 150 pips from here. But um I don't know whether it's going to be a massive downside um, as it looks like they're, I think both central banks are a bit like neck and neck in terms of when they're looking to cut rates. They might cut rates at the same time it looks like now. So um, again, I, ex I do expect the, um, the, uh, the dollar uh, uh, to rally a bit in terms of to the downside. But overall, I think my bias would be to look for buyers on the dollar, at least in the short term. So any pullbacks into a supply zone would be quite nice. So if you do get any pullbacks down, you know, up into here uh, before looking at getting short, or you're looking for at least that 109.50 to 110 area before looking at getting short. So I don't know whether I'd rather, you know, look to buy the euro against the dollar, although I am a buyer of the euro against uh, some other currencies like the Swiss franc. Actually, I think that's the only one I'm I'll buy the euro against. Um, so that's where we are on the euro dollar, euros, um, euro yen. So euro yen, uh, this was this is a pair that I'm definitely interested in getting short as well. Again, just purely based off of what I see in terms of uh, central bank divergences. So any pullbacks into uh, some levels are going to be really nice for a short trade. You've got these little intraday levels as well. So you can see here, if you're zooming into the like the hourly, uh, where you've got a wide zone of uh, supply, daily supply, you can always break that down and look for support and resistance zones within that area of supply and look for trades um, like that. But ultimately, um, looking at the uh, supply zone, I think the best value, if it does come up to these highs, Will be you know really nice if I can get the, any kind of trade to the short side. Of course, if you do want to go long, then there is that as well. So you can go long here, look for some uh, buy trades if you're confident that the euro um, may actually uh, uh, cut um, later in the year. So there's probably some sort of maybe pullback and some uh, buy trades on the euro. But overall, I do think I would want to be a seller of the. Uh, of the uh, euro against the yen as we get closer to the to the uh, Bank of Japan's uh, decision. So um, looking at the euro pound and the euro pound I think is a decent sell as well. Looking for a uh, pullback, I do think that the Bank of England are gonna cut rates later than the euro. So any pullbacks into a nice area of daily resistance and supply is going to be quite nice you can see that level's been traded in the past there's resistance there support there support resistance so if prices can pull back i think that's going to be very nice for a short trade um, again this may change if expectations change for the um of the the timing of interest rate cuts by either central bank but uh, at the moment, I don't, I can't see that happening for now. So I think the uh, the pound should be the one, the stronger out of the two, and so that pretty much would lead me to want to look for short trades on the euro pound, uh, Aussie dollar. So Aussie dollar um, this week uh, again, we've got some decisions that need to be made by the Australian dollar. I think it's on Tuesday. 
Uh, there's no balance of trade. There must be an interest rate decision on the uh, 6th of February on Tuesday night. But um, this week we did have um, obviously some strong news and good news out for the dollar. Um, so technically this was really nice, but I just think that obviously uh, things have taken a bit of a setback in terms of uh, the uh, US dollar strength. If the RBA do come out and they are hawkish, then I think then this this demand zone should be um, should kind of be more supportive and maybe see some maybe some upside. Who knows? But um, I think maybe not against the dollar or if you do. Um, it would be limited to the upside, but I think the Australian dollar would be a buy against uh, several other currencies. Um, but let's see what happens with that. The Australian dollar for me is a buy, just not against the US dollar, not against the recent sentiment and the news that has happened. Um, and gold. And so gold, um, decent level that you know prices came up to earlier in the week on the Thursday. So that would have been a nice uh, position yourself up into that supply zone. And then look for some short trades before just after the news um and that's obviously worked out a little bit depending on you know where you actually got in and where your stop loss was now um i do think that uh gold is likely to continue to devalue at least in the short term as there's positive sentiment for the dollar and positive data so but overall in terms of the uh the interest rate cycle and you know where gold is on that i th i would expect gold to continue moving uh higher but nothing moves in a straight line so this is just basically an overall pullback once the uh the, the federal reserve do actually start to uh cut rates right because they will cut rates at some point this year this is an election cycle year so i'm expecting prices to maybe pull back a bit and then look to move to the upside and go higher but again that's more medium medium term the next uh, few months so once the federal reserve start in their cutting cycle then um gold i think is a buy but in the short term it's going to be difficult to uh to really um to try and buy gold against this uh, positive uh, non-farm payroll data and inflation data at the moment so any pullbacks into these zones if you want to be a buyer of uh of, of gold i think are nice um if you're looking for short trades then um then again a pullback into this area that white line there uh indicates um, a level that is potentially uh, looking to be potentially uh, stop hunted so if that does turn out to be a stop hunt and you want to get short on gold then that's really nice in that sub daily supply zone so um yes that brings me to the end of the video and also as well i've got some emails to uh, get back to my sincere apologies this week's been a very busy week i've been planning to get back to uh, some of your questions and queries so i definitely will get back to you guys um asap and so if you have sent me a an email um, with any questions or queries i will get back to you within the next uh, day or two anyways guys have a good one i hope you have a blessed sunday and speak to you uh when the next video comes out, take care, all the best.